thank you all for making it here today. Uh, Today, we're going to be talking all about designs. Uh, today on Friday, we're going to have a little bit of fun. Uh, designs uh, are going to be a great way to, um, you know, kind of offset that cost when it comes to certain features uh, or programs that you're using, much like Canva or uh, Microsoft Publisher, uh, things of that nature. Uh, Command. KW has actually put a, a small little publisher Canva inside of Command here. So again, really, really bridging together that, that one-stop shop. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump right into the Command system here. We have a, quite a bit to cover in this half hour. Um, so again, if you guys have any questions, please, uh, through that second half hour, write down any questions you have so we can uh, explore a little further. All right. So um, again, first things first, we're going to use the Google Chrome browser because it's the best browser to use and navigate through uh, KW command. And to access KW command, we're going to go to agent.kw.com right here. Notice I did not put in that www. Now, every once in a while, um, your Google Chrome browser or, or browser may generate that www in there for you. And what will happen is uh, it'll kick you back to either a generic KW landing page or it could direct you to uh, a page that says uh, this connection's not secure or something like that. So uh, let's go ahead and try that again. Agent.kw.com. And then we'll go ahead and uh, get into the system here. There is one page previously uh, that's going to be your login page. Uh, and it's going to take the same KW username and password as you would uh, your MyKW. So it should be uh, the first initial of your first name followed by uh, your last name. If it's a pretty common name, it, it may have a number associated at the end. Now today we're going to focus on the, de the design section and before we actually get to that icon here, I want to highlight that uh, every once in a while there will be uh, new designs or feature designs right here on your homepage. So uh, take a look at these every once in a while. Uh, you may come up with a uh, cool design that, uh, that you didn't know existed and be able to use it. Uh, straight from the home screen. So uh, as you see here, going through COVID, uh, we'll have a couple of appreciations for those who are uh, who are helping out, restaurant workers, teachers, first responders, and so on. Now, if we scroll down right here, uh, it's not showing right now, but every once in a while, you'll see uh, feature designs uh, by fellow agents. So uh, if you're getting really creative in your designs and you think that it's it's uh, you know feature worthy. Uh, please go ahead and submit it to your featured designs here. Let's see if uh, we can preview this. So at this time, we, we are not able to pre uh, preview this featured design, uh, but check back later. You should be able to uh, see it. Now, if I click on this red KW square in the upper left hand corner, we're going to navigate all the way down to designs right here. Go ahead and give this a click and it'll open you up to your designs homepage here. Now, one thing that I wanna stress is if you're new to designs and creating any, uh, you may not have any just yet. And if you don't have any designs, chances are this page may be blank for you. Um, when you click on the designs button, It'll just take you to a page where it just houses all the most recent designs that you've currently been working on. <clears throat> now, um, you know, to trail off of that, if you're looking for your specific designs uh, in specific order, what we can do is we can navigate to these buttons up top here. And here, if I wanted to check out my email designs, I can just go ahead and click on this. If I want to uh, check out my social designs, I can click here and so on. I'm just gonna get, get back to the home page of designs right here. Now, how you actually create these designs, uh, it's gonna be this little button on the bottom right hand side. It's actually kind of large button. Uh, if we give this blue button a, a click here, uh, we'll have five different options to choose between. Uh, we'll have email, social, print, import PDF, and video. Now, all of these uh, are really great uh, designs that we can use, uh, but, but please note 
where mm -hmm. where this design is going to end up. So for example, if we're going to end up printing a design, chances are your printable materials are going to be right here. If you're looking to post something, your posts are, are going to be right here and so on. So uh, let's start off with uh, social and print right here. So I'm gonna click on social and then next. And uh, when you select which design you wanna create, it'll take you to this page here. And uh, this page is gonna house a number of different templates. Now, what we're gonna choose next is the content of what we're going to be uh, marketing. So on the left-hand side here, we'll see a KW app. So um, you'll see a number of different applications that you can use uh, throughout your social media posting. If I click on listing right here, you'll see that drop down opens up. And you'll see that we'll actually have for sale, just listed, price update, and a number of different options that you can choose between. If I were to click for sale right here, Here's all your for sale um, templates. And going a step further from here, you'll, you'll notice there's gonna be some buttons up top here. And these are just going to organize uh, the way that this template looks based off of where you're going to be posting it uh, on your social media. So for example, this is a Facebook uh, style post. And if we were to switch it over to say Instagram, Instagram has those uh, more of a box feel. So you'll see that that uh, will be changed right here. So depending on what we choose, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, Facebook, we'll have all these different organizationals for your marketing material or layouts. And um, let's go ahead. You have your listings, your buyers, your lead generation. Um, let's go ahead and click on let's click on lead generation right here. So this is my favorite uh, section to to go. Uh, and explore because there's just a number of, of different uh, uh, sections to, to choose between. So if I click on my website right here, what we'll see here is this is just a great little uh, way for you to um, you know just h highlight and showcase your, your site. Home value, if you're looking to um, send a home value to, to one of your clients, you have that here. Of course, holiday greetings are uh, self-explanatory. You have your, your New Year's, your Christmas, and your Thanksgiving. And I'm gonna click on client love right here. Now, uh, there's a number of different things that you can do uh, when it comes to choosing your templates. If I were to hover over one right here, I can click use right here, or I can click on this um, button and I can just send it or I could download it. We'll go ahead and click use right here. And um, when we get to this template right here, what we'll see is um, on your right hand side is going to be your marketing material. And on your left hand side is going to be all the different settings that you can choose uh, to affect that marketing material. So uh, we'll start off with this blank canvas. If I click on this text right here, what it will do is it'll highlight uh, this text box. And at this point, I can either uh, make it larger, I can shrink it. And if uh, I double click while it's highlighted, you'll see that my line appears. So now I can start to write text in right here. I'm gonna click after the H. And I'm just gonna drag this out a little bit, a little bit more. And then when you drag it out to, to uh, appear how you want it to look, what we can do is we can hover over the material and it'll give you that, uh, that cross on your cursor. And then we can just move it around. Now on your left-hand side here, uh, what we can do is uh, since we're on images, we can add our image up top here. We can drag and drop. Now this section has been uh, updated quite recently because before down below, you'd have an add to library right here. So uh, keep an eye on that. 
I'm not sure if they've if they've expanded that um, that feature of only four images. So um, so explore this this uh, this section a little bit more in your command and and uh, come back and tell me what you uh, discover. Now DBA name. If I were to click on my uh, library right here, these are the images that I've uh, imported. And if I were to drag this over right here, you'll see that this actually fits inside these image placeholders. And say I don't want this background, if I want a, a little bit different background, I can, I can click on that background image. However, if I delete any image that I've placed on my marketing material, it'll keep a image placeholder uh, to kind of uh, still acquire that that spot or that that real estate. So if I were to, to delete this right here, you'll see that it'll have an image placeholder just so I can go ahead and put that, that right here again. So we're gonna do the same thing for our background. We'll go ahead and delete this. It'll have that image placeholder. I can go ahead and drag a background and all of a sudden we can start to create a new piece of marketing material. Now up top here, I'm just gonna back a couple times just to go back to my marketing material right here. I'll, I'll click on my text again. And uh, up top here, much like Microsoft Word or your Google Docs, uh, you'll have a, uh, a toolbar up top here where you can change your font and your text. So if I wanted to change to this right here, and change my font, I can go ahead and, I don't like that. Let's go ahead and I just hit back. So now we have a Make-A-Wish jet. Uh, that looks pretty decent enough for me. Uh, again, we could go ahead and drag and drop our DBA logo right here. Um, once you're ready to, to submit or, or save your piece of marketing material, up on the upper right hand section up here, we can go ahead and rename this. And then up top here, we have a number of different options. We can, uh, we can just straight up download it. And we can choose whether it's a, a JPEG, PNG, or PDF. I'm gonna choose a standard image. or we could just share it directly. So we could share it directly to, I believe it's, yep, Facebook, Twitter, or Pinterest, as well as this uh, copy link code right here that you, you should be able to place anywhere. Now that Jet's birthday right here uh, was downloaded, I'm just going to pull this up here. What we'll see here is uh, Jet's birthday material. Now you can go ahead and upload this anywhere you want, as well as um, share it out. Now really quickly, just to show you how easy it is to, to make a number of these pieces of marketing materials. going to write party supplies right here. Um, inside your um, your settings section on your left hand side here, if I were to click uh, icons or logos, you'll be able to uh, drag and drop a number of these uh, different icons and logos here. In your text right here, uh, something that I absolutely love is they uh, group together a number of these different um, banners and stuff that you can use. So if I wanted to scroll through here and I wanted to just throw this up here, all of a sudden I went from uh, happy birthday jet to party supplies being 80% off. Um, and again, I could just, just as easily download this and I have a new piece of marketing material. So a uh, really, really easy way to use this uh, social uh, posting. Um, again, for those of you who are having any other side business, uh, it'd be 
great to have this in your back pocket as well. Um, the biggest thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that, uh, that one, you don't have to really fight with your technology too much. And two, we want to make sure that, uh, that we're cutting as many costs um, as we can without it hurting your business. So if, if you jump into designs, which I strongly believe uh, it is capable, I would say maybe compare that between your Canva or your publisher, whatever uh, marketing design that you're, you're currently paying for, and seeing if this is maybe worth cutting that extra expense. Now, if I were to go ahead and click on Jet's image again, uh, the party supplies, you'll see that that pops up right here too. Now again, there's a number of different things you can check out in here. Uh, please go ahead and, and browse around. So you have a number of these different backgrounds that you can choose. Uh, if you wanna create your own business cards, this is a great way to, uh, to start off, as well as your, uh, your email signatures and things like that. So I'm gonna back out of here. I'm going to get back into my command, and um, again, your print inside of designs are going to look uh, very similar to your social in designs. And as you see, since we were working on that here, uh, you'll see this uh, start to populate with all the different designs that you are working on. Print is going to be about the same thing, only um, think document style, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just choose a just a random listing presentation right here. I'll go ahead and click use. And uh, a little different than the design section, but still kind of keeping that same feel. You'll see it's kind of set up like a um, like a PowerPoint. You know where you're you're going to showcase the page that you're on on the right hand side and on the left hand side is going to be the different pages uh, that you're currently working on. So if I were to click on instructions right here, you'll see that will start to populate. And again, much like that uh, social designs, we can go ahead and click on uh, any text that we want. We can change the color, the font, and so on. And then again, we can go ahead and hit download. I'll download this as a PDF because we're using documents now. And uh, we can download the entire PDF, just the page, the ranges, as well as the quality. Now you also have your images and your text and stuff that you can use right here. But again, think, uh, think more document uh, print paper style. Now, I know I didn't change too much when it came to this listing presentation. In fact, I, I, I solely changed the color of a title here. Uh, but when once this does pop up here, we'll be able to kind of just see that it does, in fact, work. Now we're going to go to a couple uh, unique uh, designs features here. And that's going to come in the form of your video as well as your import PDF. Um, I'm going to do video first, uh, just because it's a little bit quicker. What we have here is uh, we have a way to create a very quick um, neighborhood. So if I just go, let's see if I can type in Main Street. And if you type in your neighborhood and you put in the average um, price and stuff, we'll go ahead and hit next. We'll keep this all the same. What it will do is it will actually create a video for you um, all about the different stats on that neighborhood. So again, all you'd have to do is fill out that form. And then let's go ahead and watch this uh, video here. 
So again, just kind of a way to compliment if you're sending your your client a neighborhood nurture email campaign or smart plan, uh, as well as uh, them having access to that neighborhood website, and then send them this. I mean, you're really giving that local level information um, without it being too much of a hassle. And last, but uh, I'll go over email here in a moment, but uh, let's go to import PDF next. This is a really cool feature that they uh, just recently added a couple months ago. And uh, an import PDF really gives you the capability to find any flyer really that you like. You could take a photo on a flyer that's on a, on a light pole and you can go and you can import it here and it will reconstruct that flyer for you to use within command. Now, again, keep in mind that not everything is 100%. However, it is pretty impressive to see uh, how far uh, this platform can go. So let me see here. I have a PDF that I'm gonna pull up. So here's just a general questions uh, tier that we have right here. It's a, it's a PDF that I have that I saved. I'm gonna use this one to uh, pull over into uh, my import files here. You'll see that's importing. Hundred percent. We'll wait for it to load up here. And again, depending on what types of fonts and styles they use, chances are uh, Command doesn't have absolutely everything uh, that that flyer may have. So you may have to substitute a certain font with something else or something of that nature. Hey Morgan. Morgan. Yeah. Could you back up a step or two? Um, I missed where you headed off to grab your material from. I just pulled it from my from my computer, from so my desktop. What did you tap on that page to get there? Did you hit start from blank or? Uh, no, I just dragged it into this uh, square right here. And that's what prompted the questions. Yep. Okay. Thank you. So you once you drag this, when you drag this uh, now off the screen is just my desktop because I have a couple different computers. Um, but when I pull this in here, then it automatically starts to load up right here. The questions were just a, it's just a random PDF that I have. Now, now that we see that this is, is a, uh, a page that has not come through correctly, we'll just go ahead and give this a click. And it will say that something is missing. Uh, your PDF is missing specific measurement unit. So what we can do is we can click on this uh, three buttons, three dots right here, and then we'll just fix this, fix this document right here. Now they're telling me about some of my fonts here. That's okay, I'll just uh, replace all with, sure, why not? Now I didn't, I wasn't too particular when I when I chose my font styles. That you may want to be, uh, that's all gonna depend on, on what you guys have going on. I'll use pixel. And then you see that that, uh, that indicator went away. So what I can do now is if I give that a double click, what it will do is it'll actually populate inside of my designs that rendition of that PowerPoint, or sorry, that PDF. Now again, you'll see that some things may be a little bit different. Now I did have to change the font style and some of it's a little uh, messed up in, in the alignment. However, for the most part, to be able to, to really replicate an entire flyer again i think it's magic you know you can't really get too much better than that and then again you have that same text and font and style so if there's anything that you want to change in here you can go ahead and do that and so on
And I may go over um, a minute or two, but I'm going to touch on this last section here, which is going to be your uh, your email. And then we'll open it up for uh, for discussion. So last but not least, right here you have your email. And this is the one that uh, is a little bit different than all the rest. Uh, if I click next right here, what you'll see is you'll see kind of a blank page, much like your um, when you create individual landing pages. If you uh, run across this, uh, and Jet, if we have time today, Jet, uh, actually, we, uh, I think yesterday, yesterday we ran through this. Um, uh, there's tons of different uh, materials to be able to help you create this uh, email email template right here. Uh, just going through this really quick, you have your layouts and your content right here. Your layouts are going to be how you organize your uh, your newsletter. So if I pull a one section over here, you'll see that I have one square. If I were to pull a third section in right here, you'll oops, you'll see that I have a third section right here. Now I know that's kind of hard to see, especially when you have to hover over them individually. So once you start building this out, just go ahead and click on this uh, view components square up here, and that should highlight your different sections right here. Um, and again, if I want to add any other pieces of content, I can throw an image right here. And then I can throw some text down below. So you want to have an image for uh, a nice banner. So well, real quick, you... everybody, <laughs> when you run into that, into this, and this is the quick fix for it. So this is a result of sometimes the system when you're putting in images, if you don't upload images immediately, it's not going to recognize that. So to bypass that, what you'll do is where Morgan's title is, he'll just go ahead and rename the title, he'll save it, he'll back out, and then he'll come back in. And then that'll reapply and give him the ability to load photos back up again. So if you're hammering like back and forth, back and forth, just save your project back out and come back in and it'll work fine. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. If, if this was running into any issues, I'll just go ahead and save it where I'm at and then back, back, back in. Um, but again, for the most part, uh, you'll you can start to build out your uh, your template however you uh, would like to see it. We'll just throw a, a big old text block in here. Oops. And we should be good. I didn't put a space right there. And I know that's uh, it's a very poor uh, newsletter. Um, keep an eye out. All of you who are on our class today, I will send this newsletter out to you guys. Uh, just my, my little gift to you, um, you know, something to take a look at. I'm just kidding. And I think that's, that's about it for the most part. What we can see up here is you'll see all these different designs that I've started to make right here. You'll see those party supplies that, uh, that, uh, untitled design, which is that, that's, uh, listing presentation, uh, the tiers, which is that PDF upload, as well as that email um, email template. And I think that's, uh, that's about it for me. I'm gonna open it up so to I'm gonna... questions, guys, yeah. Oh, sorry, real quick, everybody. I just wanna to touch on something with that. So whenever Morgan loaded in that PDF to do some editing, um, something to kind of help yourself out with, and I've dealt with this with other agents, if you're loading in um, pre-done content through a PDF, try your best, and this, this should just be consistent across all of your marketing. You shouldn't be doing more than th three fonts in any given set. So, and I can say you can stretch that to four at most. And why I say that is, is when you load in those PDFs and it doesn't recognize that you have a specific font package that's involved, 
um, with that upload, that can create a challenge for you. So if you're that agent that used 15 different fonts and you now have to come up with 15 new little check options for yourself to replace those fonts with, that can be tedious and time consuming. But if you go ahead and set it to basically just three, and what most people are going to do, they're going to have a regular or a thin style font. They're going to put in an italicized font, and you're always going to have a bold style font. So if you go ahead and just group those and just keep it three or four of those, then when you're going back and you're doing those custom edits to reapply designs, if those packages don't show up, you won't have to do as much work and you won't start racking your brain getting upset with, oh my God, I got to change out 14 more after this. So that's so my little tip. I have a question. So you can't put your brand or anything in these, in the emails? Like you would be you should, able to- You should be able to add. You should be able to add your images. No, but I think what you're asking is the branding header, like that would auto populate itself if you were doing a landing page. Right. Correct. So that is not is not currently available. However, you, what I you one think more it, time. You think it will be? I'm not sure on that. There's the, there hasn't been any plot chatter in the pipeline about that. But right. what I'd probably do is I would actually just take one of your market materials that are sent out through, um, let's just say a neighborhood nurture, for example, and right. I just capture and download that little square because okay. then you can just save that square and just use it as a as a banner upload for yourself. Okay. Yeah. And and something something to keep in mind. Um, you know, the newsletters as well as the agent sites are may be a little difficult to navigate. There may be a couple buttons or features that uh, um, that may not be too well accessible just yet. Um, but uh, but for the most part, if you do run into any issues, we we as I, I like to say, we as the human beings uh, can always find a, a back door. Uh, any other questions? You guys have us for 45 minutes. Or what, 15 minutes? Oh, so 45, yeah. all right. 20, 25 minutes, I don't know. You guys have us for as long as you need us. <laughs> May I add, ask a, uh, a DocuSign question? Absolutely. Please. All right, so um, I'm just starting to play with DocuSign because of course Emily takes care of that for me and I used to do dot loop. I was trying to figure out if I'm in my DocuSign and I'm looking at the list of all the documents on the home, I think it's on the home page. It lists everything that's been sent with history. Um, I'm considering using rooms and I was trying to find a way, is there a way to take something that's already been sent, signed, whatever, and move it into a room? And a, a yes or no answer would be fine for now. And then I'll talk to you more later about that. Um, Jet, do you wanna, you wanna dive into that a little bit? Yeah, happily. So Mark, you're saying um, you already have these signed where they signed in dot loop or somewhere else in DocuSign they've already signed oh then yeah all you have to do at that point you can do it one of two ways you can just export those old documents um, from the uh, DocuSign signatures that you have and just download them to your computer and then upload them directly using the add button and from my computer and that will go ahead and adhere those documents right inside of that room so you start by exporting them out of that list yeah. And if they already signed for it, you're always prompted with an email from DocuSign. So what you can do is look at, um, just look up the property. Usually it says document completed for such and such property. You can actually just look at that email and click the completed PDF that's in there and download it directly without ever having to sign into DocuSign. Okay. Are you that's helpful. That's helpful. I was... I was kind of thinking that if I like just checked down the list, say there were five out of 20 documents were all related to the Evergreen Street transaction, I was kind of thinking you'd check them off and then have an option to move them all at once or something across to the rooms, but that apparently doesn't um, exist. Mark, the, the way they set up DocuSign would essentially be, um, you know, to pull your forms either from your computer or from zip forms into DocuSign to get signed and then once they're signed put them into docusign but if you have them already signed i would honestly 
unless they're just for history, are you looking to, to just have that history of, of that within your new DocuSign? No, I was, doing, I was doing what you were saying. I mean, I, I, I do them in, in zip forms, mm. right? I create them there. I bring them to docu my DocuSign outside of command just to get them signed. The goal being the way Emily likes to work is until they're actually signed and completed documents, they don't go to command or her. So right. I was using yeah. DocuSign to do that. So I had this string of signed documents. And then at that point, I'm like, just looking at rooms and thinking, oh, I haven't used rooms. Is rooms a nice way to organize these now that I've got a bunch or do not? You know, Maybe I won't even bother. Do you know that you get a, uh, all KW agents get a free DocuSign account? I have that. Yeah, that's what I'm using. Oh, you have you have the free account, not yeah. not one that you're paying for. No, it's the free account. It's it's the one okay. that's tied to to command. Okay. Yep. Perfect. So um so yeah, this is this is what I would do. Um, you know, if you already are taking documents out of uh, this is this is where I kind of get a little confused. You're taking documents doc documents out of your paid DocuSign and trying to put them into DocuSign rooms. No, it, it should be the same account. It's the same. I'll double check that, but I believe it's the same free KW that's tied to my KW email. Um, I'm pretty sure if I go to command and, you know, start mm -hmm. a transaction, it's going to the same DocuSign. Yeah, perfect. And you're just, uh, and you're looking to, what are you looking to do again? Put them, well, submit I'm, them? I'm wondering if rooms, because I haven't used rooms yet. So I'm wondering if rooms is useful okay. to okay. start gathering these documents all for you know one two three Main Street. Okay, yeah, perfect. Um, let me uh, let me jump in here really quick, and I, I'm just going to show you uh, how how to navigate that. It should only take uh, just a few minutes. All right, let's see here. Right, I'm gonna I'm going to open my DocuSign also. Yeah, perfect. So um, you have a DocuSign, right? Uh, sorry, you have an opportunity. Okay, you want me to start with command then? Yes, yep. So how we're going to do this is uh, every time you want to use a room, uh, we're going to create an opportunity, and that mm -hmm. opportunity should already be tied to that room. Well, that's true. So if I click on 123 Main Street right here mm -hmm. for, for my opportunities and go to my document section. Right. You'll have a uh, start a transaction uh, to begin with. And once you click it, it'll turn into go to transaction, right? Right. Been there. I've done that. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go up in here and uh, sign in. And once you sign in, once you get from this side, from, from command into, into DocuSign, each opportunity is actually its own room. Oh, so it automatically creates a room. Mm -hmm. it, uh, yep, it automatically creates a room. So you don't have to worry about uh, uh, disorganizing your files from any other property. So when you, when you say rooms, you're actually already using these DocuSign rooms. Okay. And then um, have you linked your, your uh, zip forms inside of here yet? Uh, inside of command or DocuSign? DocuSign. Um, DocuSign. Um, yeah, pretty sure because I know if I go to add something, it's one of my choices and I can go straight to the library. Perfect. Right. I, get, yep. I, get, I can yep. do that. So you are you're all good to go. Okay. So I don't have to. So basically what I need to do is just. I've gotten things signed. I'm ready to put them into the system so Emily can run with it. I basically yep. just got to download the string of stuff, pull it over there where you're showing right now into documents, right? Basically, I'll start uh, a no, transaction. Actually, actually, now that now that it's tied to that one room, all we have to do is if I click on add file, there's mm -hmm. a DocuSign button right here. So if you have a list of all of your documents that are already signed, you can choose from the list right here. Oh, okay. All right. 
Yeah, that, that that was their kind of way of bridging, um, you know, that extra step that that uh, that you've been going through. Okay, cool. That's perfect. I'm going to try that after we're done. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. And what, one small little tip on that too is if you do have your signed and non-signed inside that DocuSign, it will show both of them. So you may have twice as many documents to filter through to, and, and pick the right one that is signed. I got it. That, and that raises a good question. I've already taken some of those unsigned versions mm -hmm. and I've archived them or whatever. I, is there any point in keeping the unsigned one once you have a signed one? I don't see a point. I, I don't see a point either, but again, I'm not, a, I'm not compliant, so I have no idea. Um, but I mean, to archive, I do believe it's like a soft delete. So it gets them out of your, out of your hair without permanently deleting them. So, right. Uh, right. So yeah, I think that, I think that'll be good for, for now. Does that kind of help you out a little bit? Absolutely. Thank you, Morgan. Jet. That's good. Absolutely. Yeah. And just Karen. make sure one other little tip in there real quick. If you run across, um, just always hit that sync transaction button. It tends to sync the transactions normally, but sometimes if you're like, oh God, I for sure loaded a document and it's not showing, just click out of the box, hit sync transaction, and it should populate for you. Okay. How you doing, Karen? Did you come here for uh, questions, right? Hey guys, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. say thank you and happy Friday. I'm gonna head out. Absolutely. Hey, enjoy Bye, the weekend. See you guys. It's, uh, nice and sunny out. Yeah, <laughs> going to hit the garden. So I um I emailed you and then I thought, oh wait, you're doing the webinar right now. Well, I'm I, glad to, I'm glad I get to see you. How are how's life? Good. I can't wait to get back into the office in full swing because I miss humans. I'm not a recluse like I thought I was. Sorry about that. Um, so I've got a listing and I want to upload a document. It's an application for a park into the RMLS listing, but it's too big. So I can't remember how to load that file to live on the internet where I can give a link. You showed me once a long time ago, but I don't do it enough. Okay. Um, so yeah. Um, that's the um, the market leader, and I can show you how to do that. But with it being a document, I think market leader only does images. Okay, so maybe Google Docs would be better. Yeah, or your, your Google Drive. If you can, if you can save it to a Google Drive, Google Drive will give you a link, and then you just uh, when you hit share, just go advance and then share with anybody who has a link. Share event. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Do you still want to hang out for a little bit? <laughs> um, I've got some of the things are going to be. No, I, I got to go meet someone real quick. I'll see you on Monday. Get back in the office. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Yes, this, this design, can you hear me? Yeah, absolutely. Um, this whole design, um, piece is really interesting. It sounds like we can do a lot. If I were going to do a presentation by video, are, are there any limit? Well, and actually it would be on Zoom. Uh, I'm part of a networking group. So can I create that video inside design and, and then link that to Zoom or just basically share that to Zoom? As um, the video design with the neighborhood and stuff? Well, maybe outside of, does it have to be specific to neighborhoods? Yeah. So as of right now, Designs only has the neighborhood video. Okay. All right. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. I know. Darn. But hey, you know what? Um, with that being a new feature that just got released and they just updated uh, sites to have uh, virtual tours, um, Mike, I wouldn't be too hard pressed to say that they may come out with an expand an expansion on that uh, video designs. Okay, so I was I was curious, if, yeah. How other than, uh, well, in terms of this presentation, exactly how to do it? Listing presentation will allow you to go through a series of different um, slides, essentially. Correct. 
Uh, so it looks like slides, but they're actually, um, it's actually print. So it's actually a sheet of paper. So okay. each sheet of paper that you're, I mean, you could, you could pretend like it, it was and just, you know, highlight it going through there, but, but it is meant to be printed. Okay. So what That's I mean, the, yeah. So would the best approach still likely be PowerPoint then? Or are they similar? What I like about PowerPoint is you can turn it into a video presentation right off the bat. So um, if you're if you are really familiar with PowerPoint, if you're familiar with you know going through starting that PowerPoint and letting it run on a clock while recording, then yeah, definitely do it that way because it's already built in. It's already a built-in feature, and that's super simple to do. Um, if you were looking for more of like graphic quality content in there that might be a little different. Um, you may have to do a little bit more of those extra steps with the PowerPoint. And what I mean by that are the animation settings. Um, but yeah, if, you, if you're comfortable with PowerPoint, you can leverage that as a powerful tool to make those videos for yourself. Okay, interesting. Will y'all be doing anything else on, um, on this part in designs? Because it's, it seems quite robust. You know, you know, uh, Mike, <laughs> almost right. fooled me there. Um, it's actually uh, the way that we set up the rest of this month. Uh, even if we're not uh, talking about design for that day, uh, we leave the last half hour open for any conversation. So if you are jumping into designs this weekend and, and come Monday, you have a few questions about it, uh, still stop on by at two o'clock. You may you may pick up a new topic, but the the next half hour is all for you guys. Okay. So if you just want to say, hey, can I see a little bit more of this or a little bit more of that, we'll, we'll be more than happy to, to jump in and explore a little more. Right. And let somebody else jump in, but just real quick question. So then what we talked about on Wednesday was creating um, emails, right, where I was sending mm -hmm. a, a bulk email that is like three or four pages of a market update. And still, and I have yet to get this to work, but same same approach as we were discussing the other day in terms of creating it, right? It made a little more sense today with creating some images for a banner, excuse me, um, some uh, branding with a banner, correct? Yep. Okay, all right. Yeah, so I don't wanna hog the time, let someone else jump in. Teresa, right. you're the last one. Oh. You're oh, also on mute, Teresa, so I can't enjoy the flair you know. of your robust personality <laughs> if you're on mute. <laughs> I did okay. it. There we go. Hey. I just said I don't have any questions. I'm just soaking everybody else's stuff up. Yeah, perfect. Um, well, I think Jet. What do we have? What do we have on Monday? Um, well, that's a that's a good question. Um, well, Monday is. Wait, why am I acting like this is difficult? The icons are right in front of me. Um, <laughs> so actually, so Monday is going to be. Um, we're going to bypass the listing section because it still is um, under construction for us. So what we'll end up doing is we'll just transition our way right into um, that insight section and we'll just start covering what the insights are, how, how to go ahead and incorporate them into your, um, into your app so that people know what, set, what sites are yours. Um, real quick though, something I want to touch for those of you who have not had the opportunity to check it out yet. Um, let me just real quickly share my my screen with everybody. Let's hope it's my profile. Fantastic. So we did get a brand new update that took place inside of our KW app. So let's see if we're inside of our landing pages section and are we seeing my screen or no? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, good. It says Russell Robbins, we're all on the same page. Yeah. 
Okay, perfect. So what I wanted to show everybody is if we click inside of our site and our app settings, you'll notice right now inside of here, we can now incorporate featured listings. And that featured listings is not just applied only to um, our app itself, but that can be incorporated with our pages as well. So all we have to do, if we want to do featured listings, we'll go ahead, we'll go to our site and our app settings, we'll go under this featured listings section, and then we'll go ahead and just select those listings outright for ourselves. And what I wanted to show everybody is if we went ahead and we did it through the Kelly guide. So um, let me just jump in real quick to our KW Tech Help. For those of you who have never set up your consumer settings, you can easily go to our KW Tech Help page and navigate your way to the very, very bottom of the page. Bear with me while my internet catches up. We can go ahead and click that consumer app for ourselves. We'll go ahead and go through the get started page, but I'm just gonna bypass until I get to that featured listing section, and here is why. So here's how it's gonna populate for yourselves when we go ahead and set those out. So it's gonna be feature, uh, find your dream home on your screen, and then this little box right down here is gonna go ahead and be all of those featured listings for you. So I believe the limit was three to five in there. But yeah, we now have a brand new feature where we can put our featured listings inside of there for yourselves. So take some time, load those in there, especially for your own properties or for properties that you want to showcase to uh, generate buyers from. Um, but the other thing that I wanted to show everyone in here is not only that, but if we jump over to our... And give me a second. Oops. You're playing in places I don't know. Uh, we're just in the consumer setting. So I'm just in consumer right now. And hmm? I said, that's not where I play. Oh, <laughs> no worries. Sorry, Teresa. Hey, Teresa. I'll, get I'll get there. We will actually uh, be covering that class uh, next week. Sweet. Yeah, don't don't worry. But right, right down yeah. here, this is the other thing I wanted to show everybody is you'll notice, let me go ahead and close down my chat real quick so that we can all see. You can actually go ahead and select listings to add your virtual tours right here in your screen. And let's say if there are any active tours where you need to switch out the video content or change that over, there's a simple edit active tours button in there. So these are the newest things that were released as of 24, 48 hours ago. So um, get out there and play with them. Wow. Okay. Hey, I have one question. Yeah, you do. So in campaigns, I, I set up a campaign for both Facebook and Instagram. I've got like hundreds, th no, thousands, literally, of impressions and I'm seeing lots of clicks. I have no leads. Did I set up something wrong so I'm not getting the leads? What was your contact form? Did you use the Facebook contact form or did you do a redirect to one of your pages? Oh God, I don't know. Did I screw up? I probably should have done a, is, am I supposed to do a Facebook form? What am I supposed to do? <laughs> so, well, here, that's why I'm asking you the question, because your automatic default when you do a campaign is a Facebook lead form. Okay. So if, if you didn't change any of those settings and put in a redirect URL, uh -huh. and if everything I'm saying to you is going over your head, odds are you just left it as is. I actually think I did a redirect, which I think the first time I ever did it, I did the Facebook form. And okay, so I'm going to tell you, I get 50, 50 results on that, Teresa. And <laughs> when, you do a with, redirect? when I do a redirect, yeah. And the reason is, um, so my, my personal belief is that the minute people realize they're like, oh, I got to type in information and do it, they're apt to just that extra step that they have to do, they're apt to not engage. Whereas the Facebook lead form, when they say click here, once they click, it'll auto-populate all of their data, and all they have to do is hit submit. So, My question then is, is there a way I can go in and edit it so I can 
change it to do the Facebook form while I'm still running the campaign? While you're running, no. So currently we don't have, uh, what you would have to do in that case, Teresa, is you'll just stop your campaign where it is. You'll only be charged for the amount that the campaign ran for. And okay. then when you redo that campaign, it's gonna take the existing credits from that previous campaign and apply it over. Oh, okay. And so I just have to pay attention to how long I'll have it run and so forth then. Exactly. And you're always like your, your, your sweet spot for any of those promo ads. I, I say start at three and no more than five. And the reason behind that is, is just the longer those campaigns run. Yeah, they'll get in front of people. But if you're doing consistent campaigns, three to five days, it may put that in front of the same people over and over and over again, which is going to create that, that atmosphere of, Oh God, I better jump on this. Oh God, I better jump on this. Oh, so I'm running my campaigns 10 days. That's way too long. I, what is, what's your point for it? So how many leads have you generated? Well, like I said, this campaign, zero. Um, the last mm -hmm. time I ran a campaign, I had 23 leads and 12 of them had wrong phone numbers. 23 leads, 12 wrong phone numbers. I don't know if the emails were good or not because I didn't check them. So then my next follow-up question is, what was the conversion per lead? So when you're inside of your, your um, campaigns, it shows you impressions, it shows you clicks, and then with leads, it puts a dollar amount right next to it. Oh. What was that dollar amount? So that part I don't know, but I'll look. Okay, so if you are running over $3.25 to $3.50 a lead, that might be too much cost up front for you. So that's why I say stick three to five days, three days to determine whether you should continue to run that ad for the additional two days. If that three days it's still looking strong, still looking solid, still looks like you're getting the volume of people you need, then go ahead and just keep that. Okay. and let it run its duration. And again, full circle of what I was saying, the reason why we wanted to do those five days and maybe repeat them over and over is because it's gonna put that in exposure in front of them again and again and again, versus if you have the same ad running once, odds are if they've clicked it, they've viewed it, just like any other advertisement, just like with Google, you have the option of hiding that ad. So if they've already seen the same ad and they already chose to hide it, then it won't be popped up in front of them. Okay. So just go ahead and blast it away. Okay. Lack of a better term. All right, I think, uh, I think that's about it for us. Anything else uh, we can do for you guys? Nope, I think you. All right. Hey, uh, have a wonderful weekend. Uh, I hope you guys stay safe. Uh, enjoy a little bit of sunshine if it doesn't